Husqvarna hatchet. I've had this for a couple years now. Love this hatchet. One of the big knocks on it was not from, about the hatchet itself, but about the uh, cover for it, the sheath. And the knock was that uh, it would come off easy, walk through the woods, whatever, you'd lose it in the woods. And then it didn't have a piece of leather inside to keep the edge from hitting the brass. I've not had that problem at all. And what I did to solve the issue, what I did to solve the issue of losing this, put a hole in the top, piece of paracord through it, burned it on the end, flattened it out so it won't pull back through. And just leash it on. Just like so. Easy peasy. It doesn't come off. Now, the Defensor Fortis backpack. AquaQuest Rogue Dry Bag. This thing is, I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's awesome. All, my, all of our gears in here, all of my gears in here. Again, I'm a big fan of making your backpack a flotation device. Small first aid kit. Backpack size. Now, I'll go over this backpack um, in a more in-depth review as time goes on. So far, I love it to death. Very comfortable. All kinds of uh, options for this. Pockets everywhere. Webbing, whole nine yards. Really cool kit. Guys, I think I have found my pillow. This is the climate. Wait, can we take just a moment of silence? We <laughs> think Dad has finally ended his pillow journey. Yes. Guys, we've been on this search for a long time. Let's go ahead and give Dad a thumbs up in the comments. Maybe some fireworks as well. Hey. <laughs> Speaking of fireworks, guys, we have an applause button. Uh, YouTube gave us an applause button. From what I understand, not every channel qualifies for an applause button. So if you look down in the uh, uh, bar below where you hit the thumbs up and the subscribe and all that, there's an applause button there. Basically what it is is a, a donate button. So you can donate anywhere from $2 to $5 to $10, 50 and I'm not even sure how much higher it goes from there. But if you guys feel so inclined, hit that applause button. We would sure appreciate it. Help support our channel. But, back to the pillow. This is the climate pillow that has the memory foam in it. It's chunked up memory foam. And you see it puffing up now. So far, this is the most comfortable camp pillow I have slept with. All the pillows that have the air chambers in there just do not work for me. They, they just don't have enough cushion for me. And that doesn't make sense. But uh, the crushed up memory foam... That's what I've been looking for. So I'll have a review on this one. Yeah, actually, I don't know that I'll actually do a review on it. I may do a comparison on this one and a couple of the other ones that I have. But so far, this is the winner. We're expecting, uh, again, snow, ice, and uh, freezing cold temperatures uh, down into the 20s. And uh, couldn't wait to get out of here. So tonight's shelter is going to be our AquaQuest 10x10 uh, Defender tarp. We're going to attempt to have a fire inside of this tarp with it closed off. <laughs> It'll be neat if it works. And we'll be able to tell pretty quick whether it's going to work or not. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. I'm going to get some uh, dinner on the fire there. Gabriel's going to cook up some venison for us.
this is going to be a TP shelter. It's one of the easiest tarp shelters to make. And uh, this will be one of the uh, tarp shelters that we're going to feature in our back to the basic series, which we're working on now. And we're trying to get our fire video squared away. Uh, then we're going to move into things like shelter. Because typically for us, conditions like this, we want to get shelter set up first, then our fire, then water, then food. We always bring water and food with us. So uh, right now, I'm working on shelter. Gabriel's working on fire. So here we are inside the tarp here. There's enough room for two people inside of this. We're gonna put a couple of rocks around this pole so we don't knock it down on us at night. As the fire dies down, I'll probably move that outside of the tarp so that way in case we do knock this down on us in the middle of the night, we're not knocking it down on those coals and melting the tarp. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to get ready and get the stuff laid out. Get set up, go check on Gabriel. Backstrap, man, is this something good. Mm. Have mercy. More salt and pepper on there before. Salt and pepper. Before it goes onto the skillet. Season the taste, of course. And folks, there are thousands of ways to cook up uh, backstrap. Pretty much where we're gonna do it. And, uh, well, I'll, actually, I'll let Gabriel explain what it's going to do. So, folks, you can see the skillet we're using can only fit about half of these back straps. So, what we're going to do is just cut these directly in half. Right there. Sharp knife makes a big difference, guys. Nice. And then that will line up perfectly to go into the skillet along with some potatoes and onions. For the potatoes, we're just going to be doing little slices here. Just end part off. Got some garlic here. Right here at the beginning, probably just gonna use one clove. Towards the end, might add a little more. And there you have it. Flip her over here in just a minute. Yeah. Alrighty, folks, that's gonna be a good meal right there. Inside of this mop suit bag, I have my. Uh, seal line compression sack for the USMC three season bag and the Wooby. I put it inside of this mop suit bag so as we're walking through the woods briars and branches and things like that aren't 
snagging my seal line. And for this outing, I'm using the green patrol bag from the older military modular sleep system and the woodland bivy. So decided to kind of throw back a little bit to the uh, older stuff, lay all this out, let the uh, sleeping mat air up. I'm going to put that inside the bivy, get everything else set up. Okay, now uh, we're going to go ahead and add our onion in. Add some onion in. Onion brings some awesome flavors to this stuff. It's a little crowded in the small skillet, but it definitely gets the job done. Yeah. We are just about done cooking this venison. This is a back strap, and I gotta tell you folks, it's the best part of the deer. Now, I like mine. Medium rare to medium rare. about it right there my goodness gracious Woo. pardon me while I eat mm. Mm, 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 mm. some of the potatoes Whew. Mm. the garlic and the onion I mean this is beautiful so, what do you think? Perfect meal for a night like tonight. Man, the butter, the garlic, onions, potatoes, it just, it really all makes it. And of course, uh, the onions and potatoes, they really complement the flavors that the venison brings into it. And then of course, butter. Guys, it really is just an awesome meal. If you've never done it, I would highly recommend that you try it out again just perfect taste and perfect for a night like tonight man that is a plate full of delicious right there we'll say our grace and we're gonna eat have mercy hopefully that's in focus <laughs> man oh man 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 Oh, come on, get in focus. Whoo, hot. <laughs> hot. My goodness, is that good. Oh. A little onion. Now, I know it's not safe to eat with your knife, but I've done it all my life. <laughs> That said, I'm going to find my fork. So, folks, the clouds have rolled in. Really, now we're just hanging out by the fire. Got a really nice fire going. This thing is putting off a lot of heat. Right now, it's... Uh, actually, you know, we can check the uh, outside temperature right now. I think it's probably still in the upper 30s, maybe. Let's see here. 32 degrees. 32, okay. So, we're at freezing. So, that's, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that's zero degrees Celsius, if I'm not mistaken. So, really we're just waiting on, you know, whatever weather is uh, going to show up. Whether it be rain, ice, snow, <laughs> weather people, well, weathermen can't decide. So, uh, And we could very well wake up again in the morning and it'd be crystal clear like it was last yeah, time. Exactly they completely the blew it last time. That's right. So, uh... 
you know, hopefully we get snow. It'll be really neat to have some, some more snow on top of uh, what we've already received just a couple of days ago. That was a really neat day. Went down on the trail, did a little hike there, and uh, showed off his, uh, got some new armor. Yes. Got some new body yes. armor. Works out perfect, feels good, and again, we'll have a full video coming up on that as well. All in all, just having a great time out here. The tarp shelter, the heated tarp shelter idea, uh, I feel like can work, but it's something that you can only keep a small fire going, and it's going to have to be twig size, really. You know, we really need something with a stove pipe. Honestly, that's that's really stove the best pipe. way. So we're going to give it a shot. What we've got going here is pretty stinking awesome <laughs> this thing is it's actually quite warm in here guys now of course it is you know again 32 degrees outside so it's it's only so warm that you can get with a twig stove but man this really does add some heat inside of this tarp shelter mm -hmm. and it really doesn't take a lot of flame at all to heat this small space up but smoke's drafting pretty yeah. well actually a little bit still gets caught inside this tarp shelter but overall i'm impressed with the performance that we have here the uh heat on the tarp itself this is still quite cool it's not hot at all and i chose green sticks here so they wouldn't heat up and catch on fire but this is just kind of a little silly idea of trying to heat a tarp shelter up real quick. And uh, I like it. So Honestly, I, I think really, like especially with this stuff, if you keep the fire small and you get a good bed of coals going, okay. and you just continue to build like small flame, I think you will do okay. That is nowhere near hot. Like, again, that's very cool guys it's really nice in here it's just kind of smoky <laughs> yeah it was smoky when i first tried to get it going but uh hey now we're not going to leave this in here all night long so uh we know that this is a fire hazard and by no means is it meant to stay in here all night long so the minute we do decide to leave it in here, we'll knock this pole down and bring the shelter out on top of us and <laughs> burn our tarp. Exactly. You gotta admit, this thing is pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sweet. Especially like right now, we're just, you know, just kind of hanging out. Not necessarily ready to go to bed quite yet, but we're getting there, you know, just kind of chilling out in the tarp shelter makes for an absolutely wonderful addition well it does knock the chill off in this tarp here that's so neat nice and warm up in the peak there it's nice and warm up in the peak i tell you it's pretty cool in here All right, we're going to let this burn down, folks, and we're going to take it outside just for safety reasons. This is a, just kind of a wild idea to see if we can heat it up a little bit in here and it's done what we wanted it to do. So, we'll let this die down. We'll catch you guys in the morning. All right, folks, it's uh, 6 a.m. Tell them what we got, boy. Well, we've got snow, ice, and rain outside. All right. Like I said last night, mixed precipitation. And uh, they definitely lived up to it this time. So we're just kind of chilling out in here. Probably going to get some coffee going here in just a second on the burner. All in all, though, in the three season, uh, Dad and I both slept very well. Surprisingly enough, when you layer up correctly, you can get a really nice night of sleep. Mm -hmm. So, just using the three season, not using the 
you know, extreme cold weather bag really went a long way. All right, coffee so, time. Yes, coffee time. Now that, it really helps uh, warm the place up. Stanley French Press. We have really become fond of these things. We're finally getting some snow. <laughs> wow. All right. It's actually a little rain right now. A little rain, snow, sleet mix. Last night's shelter, an AquaQuest 10 by 10 Defender. Perfect. That's a cool morning. Well, the Roberts boys have finally gotten a little snow out here at the river. What a wonderful day it is. It is cold. It's kind of, uh, feels like rain now, maybe. Got up and got some fire going. difference in the world that makes. In my opinion, fire building is the most important survival skill that you can ever have. So guys, the beauty of the tarp shelter is when you're ready to pack up your gear, all you have to do is just pin it up like we did here, tie the corners up to these trees, and then you can get right under it, free from rain, and pack up your gear nice and easy. It leaves you enough headspace, the way we set it up here. <laughs> and then uh, you can see the perfect outline of the, uh, <laughs> the, the shelter we had set up. So this is a 10 by 10 and two men under here. And as you can see by the outline, of course it looks really messy right now. I can't believe how messy it looks right this second. But Well, you remember we woke up and just started taking <laughs> off. <and laughs> well, that's like true. That. But there's plenty of room and we had bags over in the corners. Uh, well within the snow line, under the tarp, covered, protected by the tarp. So, very, very neat option. Again, excuse the uh, hat hair or the beanie hair, but uh, my climate, this is what I have been missing from my camp sleep system. Kind of a t-shirt feel uh, outer cover that you can peel back.
if you'd rather have that more comfortable side or you'd rather sleep with this type of material personally I prefer the uh, that t-shirt feel material on that inside I wonder if that side is more for like if you had kind of summertime or like a sweaty head kind of now that that could very well be could very well be so it's not absorbing all the sweat that comes from the back of your skull but uh, inside uh, let's see inside which is just all kinds of bits oh, yeah. of shredded memory foam and and that's what I was looking for I was looking for a pillow that felt like I was sleeping with a pillow I have at home and so far this is it a plus 100 percent now it's heavy but I don't really care this is one of those uh, items that will just support uh, <laughs> this is just a permanent part of my kit now now another thing that's important to mention is uh, dad is actually a side sleeper yes now to be honest I feel more like that pillow right there when you sleep like he does on his side kind of lay the pillow on your shoulder mm -hmm. you know so something kind of like that this pillow is absolutely perfect now me I am a back sleeper and I feel like that pillow gives just a little too much for back sleeping it feels like your skull goes a little too that's a valid point goes a little too yeah, close to the ground it will it will compress down yep. you know and you'll see how your your head would fit down in that pillow how far down that can can compress so if you are a back sleeper that is something to keep in mind this does not have an air bladder like his pillow does one way to combat that is to fold this in half but again uh, the moment that you move it's gonna come back out so so this thing uh, again now laying on your side so side sleepers this is your pillow I would not spend any money on any other random you know ten dollar fifteen dollar pillow yeah. go ahead spend the money buy one once and, <laughs> and right. get a good pillow because a good night of sleep I mean it you can't put a price tag on uh, that. you can this thing is worth its weight in gold fill this up light it up let it burn warm up a minute and I put that down by my feet or with my feet in the sleeping bag and no such thing as cold feet now been using this forever up in the deer stand you know just out and about uh, I gotta tell you never used it in my sleeping bag before the notion never occurred to me knowing we we're going to come out in these uh, three season bags minimal sleeping gear I wanted something to kind of help put me over the edge and this thing is it I tell you what and it's It's not hot enough to where you well it's almost I mean it's not hot enough to where you can't hold it barehanded but it blows away those uh, handheld warmers that you get out of Walmart in the orange uh, those orange plastic bags this is the way to go the beauty of this too is as long as you have the fuel for it I mean this thing is indefinite basically I mean you can continue continuously re refill this thing yep. so that's another great thing and it just it burns hot it's absolutely awesome putting one of these things down by your feet while you're sleeping and again it's completely safe because it's completely closed off there's yeah, literally there's no flame yeah there's no flame so it's it's no way it's going to really burn Back, anything. and this may end up putting it out but what you do is you fill this up with the lighter fluid the fuel let it uh, the vapors rise up through this material here give it a few minutes and then light it and at night you can see it it's almost like a uh, it's just like an ember it's basically. like an ember it, yeah it glows red it glows red but it's a very faint glow and uh, put the cap back on it and this thing heats up ah oh, man it is just beautiful now for back sleepers I find the Nemo Philo pillow to be the absolute best this thing is just it's perfect 
Now, as you see here, this is actually an air bladder on the inside. But actually, what I'll do is I'll show you really quick what you're left with. So, if you take a glance inside of there, you'll see this is the actual air bladder. It's kind of blue green right here. I have about an inch of foam. And it's a foam topper, and this is where you get a lot of comfort from. So once you fill this air bladder up, as I have it filled right now, you get the, it's like you get the positives of having an air bladder, and you also get the positives of having the memory foam. You get a nice, comfortable, it, your head sinks down into it a little bit, and it's never like a, a hard, it never compacts down to where your skull feels like you're laying on the ground, as it did with some of the cheaper climate pillows. You felt when you laid down into it, it just, it didn't feel right, and it really felt like you were laying on a rock. Yep, I did. Well, I wouldn't say a rock, but it felt like you were laying on the ground. Whereas this, you have enough give in it to where it still feels like you're laying on a pillow. It's actually very comfortable. I think uh, it was Dad who said a while back, when you lay down on this pillow, you just kind of smile. You smile. It, it feels good. It really does. And again, I feel like this is a perfect pillow for back sleepers. But again, laying on your side, I feel like this climate pillow. Cool. And that's a good, good uh, comparison. Good right comparison here. of size there. They're about the same. Let's see if I can hang on to it. They're about the same They're size. About the same size. This one is a very close second. Well, actually, this is my second favorite pillow because, it, like you said, it does have enough loft in it to keep your head off the ground and your neck aligned properly. It's got enough cushion with the foam there to where you're not losing all the comfort that you would normally have in your home pillow. But now me, the clear winter. Oh yeah. Side sleeper. And I sleep on my stomach a lot. So this will actually end up on my arm and under my neck. Uh, it's just fantastic. What I might do, now this is one advantage the climate does have. Having this kind of a, a rip stop, uh, I don't really know what you call this, but, but I really think this is for summertime. So you don't get your sweat soaking into that cotton liner there. Having this is, is a big advantage. Now, if you notice on the Nemo, all you have is that cotton kind of... It's kind of a, it's like a microfiber or micro fleece or something. Yeah, it, it's very comfortable. But I feel like this would soak up sweat. Yeah. And on the inside, it's not like you have another uh, liner or anything. It's just... Uh, it's just, just that foam on each side. Now, you can take this out. You can completely remove this air bladder so you can wash this. So that might be one of the reasons they didn't include something like that. But I might end up sewing one up. Now another cool thing, you get an internal stuff sack. So real quick, I just wanted to show you the valves on both of these systems. Well, the valve on the VC and the valve on the Nemo here. Now basically all you do is when it's extended like that, you can just blow your air right in. You push it down to basically stop the flow of air and then twist it to completely lock it. People all over the internet love this kind of valve. I love it myself. But then you take a look at something like the Climate V seat and you look at a lot of the, their other products, especially their older ones, you'll see this screw valve system. Guys, you'll hear, hear people talk down about these things all the time. Literally heard a guy on YouTube say, you have to be able to do breathing gymnastics to be able to fill this thing up. <laughs> Guys, it's, it's not that hard. It's not. That's uh, one breath. Just twist as you continue to blow. It's, it's not hard at all. And uh, honestly, it's, it's a very secure system. And if the pillow you're looking at buying has one of these valves on it, I would not turn away from it just because of the valve. Right. These things are still just easy enough to use. Don't always listen to what people say. You do not have to know how to do uh, breathing gymnastics to <laughs> fill this thing up. Now this, it's not that hard. This thing here is multi-purpose. At first, when I first first got this, this did not the, like it. This is the V seat. Climate V seat. I didn't like it. Thought it was too small. Thought it was just too thin. Well, I gotta tell you, this is one of the coolest pieces of gear that I own. So, and part of the reason Dad and I both love it so much, this thing, wet ground like we have today. What you can do is, you can either set it right on top of the snow or lay a couple logs down and then set it on top of this 
get get a little space in between you and the ground. Basically, what this thing is so great for, if you have damp ground, again, wet ground, lay this thing right on it, sit on it, and then your butt's not getting wet. It's absolutely amazing. And then it's multi-purpose. So like last night, I took this thing inside of the sleeping bag with me. Normally when laying on your back, you have kind of like a space in between your knees. Normally what I'll do is just kind of fold one of my legs under my other knee, kind of just making like a, a four with my legs, like the number four. But uh, basically just having the leg coming across. But last night I was able to take this thing, fold it up and put it under my knees. So this thing, it's multi-purpose and it's absolutely wonderful. You can find deals on Facebook all the time, follow Climate, because they'll post, they're doing it all the time with this thing. Free shipping, oh well, free, it's, it comes to you free. That right. You just pay shipping. Pay shipping. Which is about eight bucks, if I'm remembering correctly. So you can get one of these things, eight dollars. It's well worth the money. Now he will uh, put those under his knees while he's sleeping. I'll put them between my knees while I'm sleeping because again, I sleep on my side. So having something in between my knees helps my hips. I mean, it's just, again, at first I didn't think anything of this pillow. I thought it was just, or VC rather. So I was, I almost, I, I feel like I wasted my money. But the more I use it, the more, the more I have fallen in love with it. Now, again, just like uh, dad mentioned in the original first impressions of this thing, it could be a little wider and it could be a little longer. But to be honest, it's, uh, it's <laughs> it's definitely capable yeah. and i've uh it's definitely grown on me really last time uh let's see it was during the two-man video two-man combat tent the latest two-man combat tent video that is sitting on the ground it was a little damp so i had to set a couple of logs uh and it really just it made me realize the need for this so i ended up picking one up i found that deal on facebook again make sure to follow climate check them out Good stuff. And uh, picked up the VC. Absolutely love it. Definitely recommend that you get one. All right, I think the fire's looking just about ready. Let's get some muffins going. Try to do these about half and half. That way we get a decent portion. That's pretty close. This is gonna work, I feel like. <laughs> One thing that I did was just lay, uh, bend up a few old coat hangers. Made a few uh, modifications here. Feel like that'll make a nice rack for the coals. it goes so guys we were uh, scrolling through YouTube a couple of nights ago and we found a channel by the name of second chance George in his uh, video he talked about a couple of guys doing some baking on these Stanley French presses and uh, he actually dropped a link to our channel in his description and we thought it was really neat that he took some inspiration from us and he actually made a lid uh, closure here or a lid this piece, basically clip. just a clip. There we go, that's the word I'm looking for. He made this clip out of a coat hanger. Now, if you remember, Dad made the original clip out of an engineer stick. Which is, I was just struggling to put on the uh, cap. So, we actually, uh, Dad and I both made a similar clip we, that he made. We took George, George showed us an idea yes, of how he made his. And he gave us some, uh, 
it's actually a really neat idea. Having this clip right here in the center, or this, this dip right here, basically allows it to just have a second anchor point, which is really good, because then you have three points of contact. You have one on the outside edge, right there in the middle, and then on the other outside edge. It's just a really nice idea, and we'll leave his uh, channel down in the description box below. You guys go check him out. George is pretty cool. Second chance, George, your lid clip is absolutely awesome. Great idea, sir. Takes you a, a second, <laughs> maybe two seconds to get that clip on. Uh, I've got to fill around with mine for <laughs> a lot longer. Now, another thing that you saw on uh, my French press earlier when I showed it, uh, I have two clips running across these handles. And if you notice, I can really, even the smaller coals, I can pile a bunch of them on top. Now, that's kind of a double-edged sword. You really don't want to have too much heat on top. But it allows me to easily lay coals on top now. It's it's more of a great style, the way uh, it's all set up. We'll, we'll roll in a picture showing you uh, how this looks without coals on it. So you can get a good idea there. You see the two clips running across. Just gives me a little more surface area to be able to put the coals on and where mine a lot easier mine i have to use bigger pieces of coal so it doesn't fall off like it's just like it's doing now it, well basically all mine does is just keep those handles from folding in on themselves and basically that just allows you to be able to lay coals on top but you know what you just saw there in the video dad's just fell right off the edge okay I'm starting to smell mine i think it's getting near done when you're baking over the coals like this, really pay attention to, to the smells because obviously if it smells like it's burning, it's because that it is. But I can still smell mine baking. It's got a real sweet smell to it. Try and get this up here where it wouldn't won't burn me. Oh, look at that. Okay. Oh man, a little heat, a little hot on the side. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, oh no. I had a lot of heat on the sides. I didn't realize that I had. Oh man. That puppy's hot. So what this means is that I had too much heat on the top and not enough on the bottom. Let's see what that looks like. It looks like it's just burned right around that edge there and not the muffin itself. Now I didn't get the rise. I think it's still a little doughy in the middle. Well, you know, it's not my best ever, but that's not bad. That's not bad. It does feel a little doughy still here, though. Oh, well. Good enough to eat. What happened to it? Well, actually, that's not bad. That's actually pretty done. Inside. That's pretty done. Just on that one side. Mm -hmm. oh, it's right nice. around here. Yes, yeah. I mean it. Yeah, it's still a little undercooked, but this is it's edible. Man, that's good. Yours has got a lot of heat on the side too. You see that? Where it's uh, starting to scorch on the sides of it. Yeah. Okay, folks. I think we're just about done with this one. Definitely smell it. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. 
<laughs> it gets hot, doesn't it? <laughs> Woo, trying to get it out with the glove heated up like that. Okay. I can just grab, just it, out grab it out like that. Okay. Oh, man, yours looks perfect. You set it on the ground if you need to. It looks hot. I'll see if it's going to release a little stuck on the side. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. It's about perfect. Your heat was great. You, you had a, a good amount of heat in the right places. I had too much on the top of mine. And I had a little bit too much on the side, which probably means a little too much on the top. On the top. Mm -hmm. But all in all, check that out. Look at that. It's kind of cooled off a little bit. Like kind of hold <laughs> yeah, it. hold it now. You know, we're not smart enough to let these things cool down before we start oh, no. touching them. Oh, but, no. uh, you know, it is what it is. Don't try this at home. <laughs> let it cool down first. Oh, that's, look at that. That's nice. Perfectly done. Really liking the mods that I've done to this thing. Break it up and let's see what you got in there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Man. Perfect muffin. Man, man, man. One thing about Gabriel, <laughs> when it gets cold outside and it gets near the fire, his face just turns beet red. That's just... <laughs> How about that? Good, huh? That's a good treat. Absolutely awesome. Cold morning like it is right now. This is absolutely perfect. Not always the easiest to spread butter on things, so normally <laughs> you just have to use your hands. We don't mind getting our hands dirty. That's right. Check that out. Man. If you haven't tried this, try bake a blue rare muffin next time you're out might be a challenging task to start off with but it's definitely a rewarding one but you've learned the skill definitely a morale boost mm. absolutely amazing Back for his lighter? Yes. Lost uh, quite a bit of the water, weight of the food last night. Mm -hmm. But uh, torque might be a little heavier since that still has some water on it. And this pack is constantly getting wet, soaking up on the nylon. <laughs> Guys, we're pushing this three day to the max. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> but again, I feel like the pack that dad has on is a little more suited for, uh, for the kind of setup we're running. But I feel like, honestly, uh, you see, I, I feel like Dad's pack, it's a little bigger, well, quite a lot bigger, actually. And I feel like it, it really works better for this kind of a, uh, a setup. And I feel like it handles the load a little better. I feel like oh, it really does. Absolutely. feels better. See, it's got a, a thicker hip belt, a wider hip belt, mm -hmm. load lifters, thick padded straps. Mm -hmm. It just everything on this pack is made. This pack, I mean, simply put, it's just a beast. Again, it is an Air Force issue pack back in the mid 2000s. So being Air Force, it's going to be padded. Now that pack that Gabriel has on, the one that we normally both carry, three-day assault pack for the Marines. That one's made to wear over the armor, so that's part of the reason why it's not as padded in the waist belt and shoulder straps as other packs normally would be. That's true. All right, so I think we're going to head on out of here, guys. All right, folks, let's hit the road. Days like today, we love being out here on this river. Rainy, miserable, we love it. 
get a good fire going, get under your tarp. Man, this is hard to beat. So we thank you for coming along on this adventure with us. Camped out in the snow. First overnighter in the snow this year. Again, I did a day hike in the snow a, couple, a few days ago, but uh, first official overnighter of 2021 in the snow. <laughs> no. Absolutely awesome. Also, we learned that Dad and I can both run a three season in the wintertime below freezing temperatures. Just you have to wear the right clothing and when you layer up correctly, it's, uh, it's just as good as the black bag. So honestly, both of us had great nights of sleep and it was a great little experiment. Hey guys, don't forget the applause button. It's down there in the same line of subscribe, like, dislike, share. It's on that same uh, selection choices. The applause button is basically just a donate button. Uh, you can click that and it starts at like $2, $5, $10. It goes on up. But thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Please share this video. Again, thank you for joining us. And as always, may the wings of liberty never lose a feather. And God bless.